Run, river, run, run through the hills. Run, river, run to the sea. Run, river, run to your place beneath the sun. Run, river, run. Hi, welcome to Be My Guest. Today we have Pat Hinckley with us. Pat drove down from Wakefield, and she is the author of Something That Touches My Life and It May Touch Yours, Chasing Sleep. Lonely Tussles in the Dark. Thank you for writing this book. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I, I'm one of those people I was sharing with Pat. It takes me forever to, usually, usually, to get to sleep. You know, I might have to listen to a, um, a radio talk show or <clears throat> read for a while. But then still that might not work. Okay, then I read somewhere where they say, break the pattern. Get up, go have a snack. Do something different, then come back to bed. I'd have to say, usually that works. It might not be till 4 a.m., and God forbid I got to get up at 8, which is not usually the case. But then you have my husband has the direct opposite, out like a light. I mean, I'm so envious. <laughs> okay, envious! But then he wakes up at 6 and can't go back to sleep. Tell us about your experience, Pat. What made you write this wonderful book? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I've been sleepless for many, 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 many years. When you were a child, too, did you run? No, 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 no. I slept like a baby when yeah. I was uh, younger yeah. and didn't think anything of it. Thought, oh, this is just the way life went. Yeah. But no. So I did, after many years, I was awake one night and I was like, oh my God, I should write about this. <laughs> I've, been, I've been awake for so long, I need to write about this. And so, you know, I did. Is and, yours where you... Uh, you can't get to sleep, or you get to sleep and you wake up? It depends. The whole book depends. It all depends. All mostly I can't, I uh, wake up in the night. Sometimes I can't get to sleep, but most of the time I wake up at, uh, it, and, and that varies, but 3 o'clock. Oh! Sometimes I wake up at 12.30 and 3 and 5. All on the same night? Yeah, sometimes. But how, most of the time. I, I know that, um, <laughs> Recently, I had a very bad experience. I was going to have eye surgery the next morning. You can't eat, okay? We all know, okay, can't eat. But for some reason, I could not sleep. By the time it got to be 4 o'clock, I was kind of nervous, but not over the top nervous. I'd had the other one done. I said, forget about it. I'm just going to stay up the rest of the night. Huge mistake. I, I yeah. was in such a horrible state yeah. when I got there. Does that affect you like that, too? Oh, yeah. If I've been awake several times during the night or if I have a time and sometimes I wake up at 2.30 and can't get back to sleep, period. Yeah. That's a disaster. I'm just really tired. My eyes are so heavy and I'm frazzled the whole day. I can't think clearly. clearly and uh, It's a horrible view. I was almost like, just felt sick. Well, of course, I hadn't yeah. had anything to eat. I couldn't have a snack. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. that made it so that made it worse. worse. That made it worse. I want to just share with people in the back of her wonderful book, Pat is a former holistic psychotherapist who looks beyond conventional approaches to most anything. The author holds with the premise that change begins within, an outlook which helps in her attempts to unravel a decades long sleep conundrum. This attitude especially fits the topic of sleeplessness, for often the only thing we can manage is our attitude toward it. Why are so many people afraid that, oh, well, we're gonna cover this too, that one, of the, one of the conundrums we get into is, well, I should be able to, I should, I'm shooting on this. I should be able to get right to sleep. Right. It's not unusual to take a half an hour, 20 minutes to get to sleep. And oftentimes what's happening nowadays is people are looking at, I don't have it with me, their devices, computer, until the last minute and then expecting that, oh, lights out, I'm going to go to sleep. And you know what? It just doesn't happen that way. Overstimulated. We're, we're complex biochemical mechanisms we, we, when we overstimulate ourselves cortisol kicks in um, if we stay keep lights on too late the um, mm -hmm. melatonin doesn't get going a hormone that regulates sleep and awakefulness so yeah. you know we have to pay attention to our biological needs we are biological creatures I know they say that um, turn it this is hard to do turn off your computer and TV like two hours or something like that before you go to bed. Eh? What if you want to watch the eleven o'clock news and then you want to go to bed and read? 
And then there's one one of the many great things she touches on, Pat Pat Hinkley here, is uh, multitasking. <laughs> yes, right. How did you figure that one out? How, did you do it yourself? Well, I, I wrote that other book about... Um, Claiming Space, Finding Stillness That Aspires Action. Now, I didn't see this book. She also drew the cover for this one. When did this one come out? In uh, 2014. But that's where I got the idea, the multitasking, because, yeah. well, I'm a therapist, but also I went through, that's like a workshop in the book for stillness and well-being, so there's a so lot in there. As a holistic psychotherapist, do you deal, you must deal with quite a few people with sleeping issues, right? Well, I'm retired now, so I'm not oh. doing that. But really? <laughs> oh, God. I, um, I had, to, you can always tell I've gone through a book. Insomnia falls into the category of a mecha mechanistic approach where some expect <clears throat> to almost instantaneously fall asleep for eight uninterrupted hours before waking refreshed and ready for the next day. This sets us up for misery, presumptive expectations. Does that make people very anxious? Well, sure, if you think that you should be able to get to sleep like that and sleep for eight hours, and then, um, you know, the world is, the medical world and the advertising world is telling you bad things are going to happen, you know, that, that sets a, an anxiety pattern. Yeah, did you feel that but yourself? But it's just not true. No, because I don't buy into No, you, did. <laughs> you didn't, you didn't feel anger things. or anxiety about it? <clears throat> oh, I, sure, I feel angry when I wake up and I'm like, <laughs> I, need to, yeah. I need to get things done tomorrow and I can't have another foggy day. And uh, What yeah. do you do when, when, if you wake up? Like, do you change the pattern? What do you do to you get up out of bed? I've done all kinds of things. I get up, I, I lie there, and uh, nowadays I read in bed and, you know, hope I'm on to something that may be helping and I'm not staying awake for as long. What's well, a really good sign is if I'm reading real late, <laughs> of course my husband doesn't enjoy hearing a huge thump on the floor, <laughs> but <laughs> I've sleep, fallen asleep and the book goes right on the floor. It good for me, not up. so good for him. <laughs> You can always tell when, well, she's asleep because it's gone. <laughs> reading can help me, except if I'm reading something that is a suspense thriller. I know. You don't want to read anything that you get caught in. But I love it. Read boring <laughs> things. <laughs> no, I read all kinds of read things. Read something boring. <laughs> yeah. Well, now, let's see. What's, what would I, I don't know about, so do, oh, puzzles, <clears throat> crossword puzzles. You could do that. Those are, I find, are pretty relaxing. They're yeah. mindless, right? Yeah, sure. That's not too bad. But I cannot sleep on an empty stomach. So if it gets to be one, two, two thirty, three, now I'm like, God, now I'm hungry. Just like a baby who's got to be fed. I'm like, I cannot go to sleep on an empty stomach. I'm not mm. saying a huge meal. No, no, a few nuts or some some little thing. English just muffin. To, yeah, just to calm your stomach. And then what I'll do? Probably a mistake. I'll put television on and watch Criminal Minds. <laughs> Ironically, though, sometimes I'll get so caught up in it, I'll go to sleep. That'll make me go to sleep because it has changed what I was thinking about. Mm -hmm. I know it's a little wild. Now, <clears throat> not being able to sleep when I want to is very different from a disease needing an appointment for service and repair. In actuality, taking time to drift off into sleep is perfectly normal. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it, you're unwinding, and if you help yourself in that unwinding, turn off the devices and the TV a little earlier, maybe read for a while, and just gradually <coughs> wind down the day, you help yourself to um, slide into sleep. One of the things I don't suggest, and one of the things I do, is I love radio talk shows. And I got headphones. <coughs> so let's see, I may have a book, it, I know it sounds weird, a book in front of me, I'm listening to WBZ at midnight, Speaking of multitasking <laughs> and wanting, I know. wanting to go to sleep. <laughs> I know it. Is it it's maybe a throwback to when we were kids like, ha ha, I'm not going to go to sleep just because you tell me to? Right. I didn't have trouble as a kid. No. I knew when bedtime was and that was it. The only time you got up out of bed was if you're sick and come get mom and dad. I, I knew the, the ropes on that. Yeah. I never had trouble, but for some reason in the last, oh, I don't know, four or five years, it cropped up, mm -hmm. and I thought, what is, what is the big deal? Do you believe it's something troubling a person, or? Well, sometimes it can be hormonal. 
uh, oh, no. you know, as you get to a certain age, and so that's mm -hmm. worth looking into. I've just discovered that, and so I'm really? uh, that's I'm interesting. pursuing that. What about for guys, though? Hormonal for men, too? Could be, could be. Yeah, but you know, it, it's also your thoughts. If your thoughts are spinning around like that, I always say it's a good idea to put a piece of paper and a pencil by your bed yeah. and <laughs> write them down. Write them down. So that, that gets me. Because if I think, I better write it down or go into my office right now because yeah. I won't remember it in the morning, so yeah. I physically so get just No, just write a little yeah. note. This works for you? You yeah. found out it works? Yeah. Nobody else in your family that you know of is going through this? You're it? Oh, my father your did. Father, that's right, your father did. He's no longer <coughs> alive. Did he, he did. go through it where he couldn't get to sleep or he got to sleep and he woke up? I don't know. <coughs> Yeah, I, <laughs> I was out of the house a long time. I was sharing with Pat, we're talking with Pat Hinkley, and she is the author of Chasing Sleep, Lonely Tussles in the Dark. Excellent. I know a lot of us out there <laughs> would grab this book and read it. It will be downstairs in the Upton Library. Pat, <clears throat> where else can people get your book? Um, you can uh, find me at patriciahinkley.com, and you can buy the book on Amazon and if you happen to live in Rhode Island <laughs> it's in local bookstores uh, so Amazon.com and no, PatriciaHinkley.com Rhode Island are you I thought you were in Wakefield Mass no Wakefield Rhode Island oh because we do have okay you probably wonder why did she say for book 495 okay wait where is it where is that near <clears throat> um, near Narragansett it's on it's on the coast you're on the coast side yeah I know I lived in Providence and North Providence. I used to hop on 146. That's what I came on, 146, yeah. Did I bring you in through Uxbridge and down through Route 16? I had my GPS going. <laughs> and we're a lot of guests, you know, I've kidded about this out here, but it's not so funny. You know, the Bermuda Triangle. Well, right out here near the Upton Library in the town hall, for some reason, we've had numerous guests end up sailing right past us and heading for. Well, it seems like it would be easy to do. <clears throat> I know it, but they do. and. Using only their GPS, they'll insist, oh, oh, I'm fine, just give me the address. <laughs> I always include a little extra tip, like when you see the Upton Town Hall, Diane right. Hope, look over here. Because, <laughs> right. Well, the Upton Town Library does not look exactly like a library these yeah. days does. No, it doesn't. So they've, you know, they've like, is that really it? And I'm like, yes, that's really, really it. Now, the burden of exhaustion commingled with multitasking can contribute to waking at night. It is tiring, and yet I might not realize it. Well, you know, it's the air you breathe. You're used to it. And so the, the trick, the challenge, is to stop a little bit and take little breaks and just notice what that's like. Notice, you know, life going on inside you and out in the world instead of do 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 do, do, do one thing. Where women are really good at that multitasking stuff, but it's, it's good to take breaks from that. I think a lot of, I don't know, <clears throat> I would call myself as the day goes on, I become more active. A lot of people start winding down by 4 or 5, mm -hmm. but I'm more of a night person. And that definitely, I don't know if it's heredity, but I have seen it in my family constantly. My father could work in his home office all night, then go to bed, sleep till 11 if he could. Um, my grandfather was kidding with Pat. He had a problem with insomnia, and he would tell my mother, I'm going to catch the first boat because he might feel a little bit sleepy. Yeah. I know what he's talking about. Oh, it's absolutely. I encourage people to take, I call it the, the sleepy train. Catch that train because yeah. if you don't, you're going to get to that next stage where you get your second wind. And, you That's know, it. Then it's hopeless. <laughs> Pat, do you recommend people, you know, probably it sounds a little hokey, everybody's talking about, do you recommend um, exercise every day? physically get out there and tie well, yourself up? Well, sure. I think exercise is great. Um, I'm not big on recommending how to do this. <coughs> I think every, what the point of my book is that it's really important for each of us to see what works. We're not, we're not um, part of the charts. Mm -hmm. We're individual, unique beings. And so educate yourself, try a lot of things, and see what works for you, and trust yourself. Being a, a, a holistic psychotherapist, I love that approach because you're taking in the whole body. You're not just going from a chemical pill type of thing, which is right. okay for some people. But holistic, how long have you been in, were you in psychotherapy? 
Um, about 15 years. Did you study it? Did you go, to, where did you study it? <laughs> My life has been an evolution. I was an RN once upon a time. You were a nurse. Yeah, and, yeah. and an artist. And then I went back to school yeah. at Leslie College and, you know, studied psychotherapy, psychology, holistic studies. That's amazing. Now, being a nurse, too, I mean, the, uh, the uh, shifts that nurses do, did you ever have to do, like, an all-night? Yeah, I did How all did of it. It was horrible. <laughs> I hated I staying I up. I couldn't do that, night. I don't think. No, I would feel it horrible. Was, it was, yeah, I felt horrible. It, that was not good. You, so did you specialize as an RN in any particular department? No, I was all over the place. Yeah. You know, How many just, years were you a nurse? Uh, only three. And then you changed your mind. <laughs> because I knew I didn't like it right away. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then I went back to art school. Now, she is an so. artist, too, and she surprised me with this when she walked in because on her first book, Claiming Space, you, it looks like a man, an oral person, just standing there, right? Is about attaining the inherent happiness you were born to experience. Yep, it's true. It's in us, but we sometimes cover it up with being too busy all day. Oh, I know. You know, I'll, I'll <laughs> if somebody saw my calendar, they say, oh my God, <laughs> what a mess. <laughs> but I always have enough time for a friend. You'll see somebody yeah. and say, oh, oh, I'm sorry, I haven't gotten back to you. I've been so busy. <clears throat> I want to say to her, why is it that I can take five or ten minutes in my day to answer your email, yeah. maybe your phone call? Is it that they, you, they're they not putting value on that person as much as whatever? I don't know what the deal is, but I price value on whoever contacts me. Well, I think, I think it's friendship is really important. That's Fam how you keep Family, yeah. love. You know, Definitely. also nature, being being out in nature, paying attention to what brings you happiness. That, Those things mm -hmm. are really That's part important. of your whole list. Again, yep. Pat, how can they get a hold of your book? At patriciahinkley.com and at Amazon and local to Rhode Island. <laughs> Definitely. Bookstores, but Amazon.com and Patricia Hinkley. Mm -hmm. Dot com. We've got to get you up here because we have Tatnock Bookseller right up the street in Westboro. They're big. Of course, Barnes & Noble is all over a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, but I know you'd love Tatnock. You give presentations yeah. too, right? Yes, I do. You do. Yes. And book signings. book signings. I'll talk to you after it's about this up the street. Okay. Now, <clears throat> we're talking with Patricia Hinckley, and she is the author of Chasing Sleep, Lonely Tussles in the Dark, Something that a lot of us can, I never thought it would happen, can relate to. I'm looking through Millions of us. Oh, God. <laughs> you know, when you wake up in the middle of the night and you can't sleep, you're not alone. There's probably somebody else in your neighborhood <laughs> pacing the floor. Okay. I love this. This is so important. If you're a caretaker out there, boy, the caretaker has to take care, right? I yeah. saw my father go down trying to take care of my mother. He just oh, passed it's out. so important to take care of yourself in that yeah. situation. Taking care of others can significantly influence, I think I've got a dear friend who's got this problem with her, her situation, can significantly <clears throat> influence sleep if a person forgets to include himself in this overall picture. If you're a caretaker and somebody perhaps has Alzheimer's or something, or physical, and you've been with them all day, and maybe they wake you up at night, what do they do? How do they, can they cope? Well, I think that it's really important for people to begin to have the conversation with their partner um, that I really love you, I really want to take care of you, and I have to take care of myself. So sometimes there's going to be somebody else here yeah. so that I have a little bit of a time for my life because otherwise people get really tired out. Oh yeah. And they angry. might get resentful. Yeah. <laughs> Carrying your resentment. And that doesn't help anybody. That doesn't help the relationship and ultimately it doesn't help the caretaker. I mean you have the caretaker yeah, who like in my family didn't want any help. I mean very proud. I don't I don't need the help and he just he died before my mother did. Yeah. <clears throat> he just went down. Yeah. <clears throat> and and I you must see this a lot of caretakers when you were people burning out well, sure. Everybody needs, uh, you know, it's our, our human heart that wants to take care of our people we love. Yeah. And, and that's a really good thing. But we also have ourselves that we could love <laughs> and, and just stop a bit. And, and I think that many times the, the one who's being taken care of expects that that person is going to do it. Yeah. And so that's where the conversation is really important to, yeah. to talk about it. 
and the, so you know I really care and I need to take care of myself too. Did you see this in your family, Pat? No, but I've <coughs> seen it around. It's a lot. It, well, my father took care of my mother. Yes, that's true. The longer, which is great, the longer people live. Thank God for the medical help that we can get. Right. The longer people live, the uh, the not so hot side of it is that <coughs> they may they may need help from their spouse or their children. Perhaps their older children are working. Mm -hmm. um, they've got children of their own. It's not that they don't want to be there, but it's just like, oh my God, how can I be right. at my son's school and be with mom? Right. So you suggest them reaching out and getting somebody to help out. Absolutely, absolutely. Somehow, however they can do it. But first, the conversation mm -hmm. has to happen of why they're doing that. And that this is, it's not a, you know, it's, it's, it's not a question of can I do this, it's I am going to do it, I have to do it, and I love you still. <laughs> exactly. What is your opinion about um, your holistic, so I would think you might not be in favor of uh, maybe a sleeping pill, things like this? You know what, I, I have a lot of suggestions in there mm -hmm. and things that I've tried, and I take Ambien when I absolutely have to. I don't recommend it. I'm not, I'm not recommending it person. Right, I, yeah. I encourage you to do what you can to take care of yourself and just look at these as, you know, sure. just information. Yeah. But sometimes I need to get up early for a meeting and I, if I'm awake, I just am like, oh my God, I have to do it. But I, what I do is I take a half an Ambien and a half an Ambien the next night and a half an Ambien the it next works. night. And then I've gotten myself through that. Tell us about Dennis, uh, that, that the, the fellow that was taking care of his wife. Oh, well, uh, Dennis was just so kind of downtrodden and, and had no, no hope or no lifefulness in him. He just felt like he was uh, waiting for the next thing that he had to take his wife to. And, you know, bless his heart, I mean, he was taking care of her, but at great consequence to himself. Yeah, and he was one of the ones that made me think, gosh, you know, they really need to talk about caretaking and, and so that he can have some things in his life. So it doesn't have to be much, but it's a little bit of things worthwhile. That, you know, meaning and purpose is so important in our lives. And if there's no meaning other than taking your wife to the next doctor's appointment and waiting. <laughs> you got to have something fun for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I have a friend who has uh, pretty severe bipolar disorder, mm -hmm. and she can be up, I don't know how she does it, but this disorder has her up sometimes five nights in a row. I would be probably in a nut house. I couldn't do that. <laughs> and with oh. with bipolar, sleep is so important. Yeah. It's absolutely, sleep and continuity, some kind of stability is so important, and so however a person in that situation can get sleep is just, that's that sets you off. You and what, you might not be able to sleep because you're anxious and depressed, but then it becomes a snowball. If you can't sleep right. all night, now it's worse. Right, right. What do you suggest to people that are going through that part where it just becomes snowballing? Well, do what they can to um, get out of the pattern for a little bit. Change your pattern. Somebody once said to me, take that cassette out of your recorder, back when cassettes, you know, whatever, your, your, your CD, put in another one. Like yeah, so maybe you need more exercise. Maybe you need to be outside more, get light in your eyes. All of this has to do with the melatonin. Um, you know, if you're, if you're not sleeping yeah. in the night and then you're sleeping in the day, you're not getting the amount of light that you need in your eyes. So go outside first thing in the morning and get that early morning light, get enough exercise. Um, what do you think of melatonin? <laughs> well, it's part of us. Yeah. Oh, you mean as if a supplement? You took it, yeah, as a supplement. Well, it's fine. It. Uh, I have a spray melatonin that seems mm. to help. Never heard of that. Yeah. Well, it's it just gets in better. Uh, up the nose or in your throat? No, in your throat. A spray. Yeah. Melatonin. Mm -hmm. I've always wondered if it was safe to use or okay. I've heard it's people have no problem with it generally. I think it's generally safe. I mean, a, it, a small dose is the best. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Mercola, Mercola.com, has uh, a lot of those things and he has the spray melatonin and again, research it, learn, 
educate yourself. Yes. And then try it, and then make your decision. Decide for yourself what's right. We have right. been talking with Patricia Hinckley. She's the author of Chasing Sleep, Lonely Tussles in the Dark. Where have you been appearing, Pat? Well, I've spoken at the uh, Narragansett Library and um, at uh, Stillwater uh, Books in Pawtucket. And so I'm... You can get you up this way. Yes, I'll come up this way. <laughs> I'm going to be speaking in the fall at different libraries. And Good. Happy to go most everywhere. Anybody close so people could look forward to going? Any uh, place that's close to here? Or? No, not so far, but you're, you'll help me with that. <laughs> <laughs> I see that. Now, there's so many places around. Um, we have so many authors who are um, self-published, but you know, also Stillwater is a good little private publication it company. Is. Why not? And the thing is, they allowed you to design your own cover. This couldn't be better. Look at this. Sleep. It looks like the middle of the night. <laughs> How many of us have looked like, oh my God, it's like three. Are my neighbors still awake? Is there anybody out there? Am I alone? <laughs> Actually, yes, they're all awake. There are quite a few. And I think that it causes more anxiety mm -hmm. because people are uh, start to say, oh my God, it's, this is good. This isn't right. I'm supposed to be just like your book says. Right. I'm supposed to be. Patricia, one more time, How can before we close, how can they get your book? PatriciaHinkley.com and on Amazon.com and at local bookstores in, in southern Rhode Island and Providence. Chasing Sleep, Lonely Tussles in the Dark. Those of you out there are going to be throwing the sheets around in your bed tonight. <laughs> you're, you're like, oh my. Read this. <laughs> Read this book. It will give you quite a few. Also, it'll be downstairs in the library. If Matt hasn't put it up yet, just ask, uh, ask them for, uh, for the copy and, and borrow that. But you can also buy it and look on it. What have we got coming up? Anything? Any more works? I have a book called Climate Sense mm -hmm. that is at the publisher now, and it should be out by September. And it's a, a guide to trying not to freak out around the climate changing. I um, noticed, yeah, we've had some pretty weird winter and a weird spring, and yeah. it's odd. You don't it's know what odd. to wear. <laughs> No. It always strange. And it's worse if you live on the coast because right. things that's are changing. That's where you are. Yeah, yeah. that's where you are. Yeah. Um, so that will be out in the fall. Yeah. Let us know. Okay. Okay. I will. Thanks, Pat, for being with us. Thank you. Making the trip Thank up from so Wakefield, much. Rhode Island, near the uh, Narragansett. So happy to be here. This Thank is you. great. We'll see you next time. I'll be my guest.